Doctors and nurses of Reddit, what was the creepiest last words you heard from a patient right before they died? Not a doctor but I overheard an old lady whisper this to her old husband dying of kidney problems. You are going to beat this, you got away with murder, this is nothing. I work in a cardiac IQ. We had a patient who had a pulmonary artery rupture, a rare, but known complication of a Swangans catheter. One minute he was joking around with us and the next bright red blood was spewing out of his mouth. His last words before he died were why is this happening to me it still haunts me years later. I can't imagine how awful that was. Nurse here, had a patient come into the air with shortness of breath. He started deteriorating in the air, and then quite rapidly on the transport up the IQ. We got him wheeled into his room, replaced the lines and tubes with our own, and transferred him from the transport stretcher to his IQ bed. He actually did most of the transfer himself. He didn't say anything, but just before he died he pleasantly adjusted his own pillow, laid his head down, and then his eyes went blank. This man just made himself comfortable before laying down to die. I'm a nurse and was previously working at an assisted living community on the dementia alzheimer's unit. My very favorite patient had been declining pretty steadily so I was checking on him very frequently. We would have long chats and joke around with each other, but in the last two weeks of his life, he stopped talking completely and didn't really acknowledge conversation directed at him at all. I finished my medication runs for the evening and went to see him before I left. I told him I was leaving for the night and that I'd see him the following day, and he looked me in the eyes and smiled so genuinely and said, you look like an angel. I thought it was so sweet because he had not seemed lucid in weeks. He died the next morning. It really messed with me. Whoa, that put a tear in my eye, and I'm not the kind of guy to have that happen to me. You obviously had a very positive effect on the final weeks of that man's life. Hold your head up high. I don't care that I'm not a nurse, but this was said by my dad to the nurse, so close enough. Backstory, dad had me. he'd had it since he was 18, diagnosed at 20, married my mom at 24, had me at 29, died 15 days short of 45. Six months before that, he was put on hospice, he and mom were discussing funeral arrangements. And my mom jokingly said, you know Tim, the best thing you could do would be to die on a Wednesday. That way we can have the body prepared on Thursday, the viewing on Friday, and the memorial on Saturday, so more people could come. The morning we got the call that it was time, my mom, two sisters, and I were about 5 minutes too late. After we said our goodbyes, the nurse pulled my mom aside and asked if that day had any significance. It's not even 6am yet, so mom doesn't even know what day it is much less if it's important. The nurse tells her it's the 21st of May. Number. Nothing is coming to mind. The nurse told her that the previous day he kept asking what day it was and they'd tell him it was the 20th. He'd look irritated but accept it. That morning, he asked what day it was, and they said, it's Wednesday, the 21st of May. He smiled squeezed his favorite nurse's hand, and was gone almost immediately. It was Memorial Day weekend, and we did just as he and mom had planned, and despite many friends being out of town for the holiday, we had over 250 people show up at the memorial service, overflowing the tiny church more than it had ever been filled. To his dying day, he was trying to make things easier for our family. I miss him. Hey, out of this whole thread, this one got me the most. People who think of others in their last moments are really the example we should all live up to. Thanks for sharing. Hugs for you. My dad fell into unconsciousness around noon. We managed to get him into bed and he responded with a hand squeeze when I said I love you. We watched and waited the rest of the day. Around 3am his breathing changed and as his breathing become more and more labored he bolted upright. Eyes wide open. Looked at his wife. My sister, then me, smiled, exhaled, and died. Thank you for sharing that. My first hospice case. She was on morphine and started mock smoking. She looked at me, took my hand and said please in the most pleading voice I've ever heard. I sat with her body until the corner arrived. She has no friends or family. Only her lawyer showed up. I've only done one hospice case since. That's so sad. She must have been so lonely get home safe little one it wasn't what he said 
He said the same thing to me anytime I had him as a patient for the evening. It was how he said it. He gave me this look and paused like he knew. The DNRs in my experience always know when it's time. It's creepy. Relieved. They're relieved when it comes. Most of my patients were older and usually happy that they might see their friends and family again. Relieved that the pain will be gone and that they won't be lonely ever again. Speaking of, if you have older relatives that aren't buttholes, please visit them. They miss you. Cardiac IQ had a gentleman who was DNR on comfort care. He was demented and was cursing like a sailor. He seemed to have moments of clarity and would ask to see his brothers, who were both passed. After a particularly worrisome heart rhythm, he went back into a sinus tachycardia and looked me in my eyes and said hey, what's your name, Kabk? What do you do here? I'm a nurse. After this, he was quiet for some time. Then he said, frick you, and then he died about 20 minutes later. I can only imagine what was going through his mind as he passed. Nailed it. Ugh. I was a hospice nurse for many years. Super gratifying job for a nurse. Surprisingly, as a regular nurse, you were rarely offered thanks. Hospice nursing is an island into itself. Mostly peaceful, lots of times sad, often a blessing. This is sad, but also creepy, and I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it. Had a 20 year old kid, gang member, who was dying of primary liver cancer. Super unusual, aggressive, and terminal. He was angry at the universe. His family was there to comfort him, but he literally spit in their faces. Every ounce of energy he had left was angry and mean and ugly. His mom would beg him to lighten up and accept Jesus into his heart. He would swing at her and tell her to F herself. The family remained beside, in hopes he would chill out at the end. His last day, hours, moments, he was angry. The family called me into the room, and told me they thought he was going. He wasn't responding. Chain Stokes breaths, eyes glossy and skin cold. The end was imminent. His lovely mother, in her dearest attempt, whispered to him to go towards the light, to her geezus. With his dying breath he opened his eyes, looked at her and said f your geezus. A second or two later, he slowly turned his head to the to the left, and got the most horrific look on his face as if he was looking at something we couldn't see, and horrified. Like in a bad movie, his face contorted, and he screamed with his last breath, eyes wide, oh crap, oh crap, oh hi on you then made a guttural noise and promptly fell back into the bed and died. Every family member was shaking and too frightened to speak, and I left the room and took two days off. I don't care if I never find out what he saw. Well he was angry at the idea of Jesus, right? So maybe Jesus showed up and took him to heaven and now he's up there sitting in a corner scowling. My grandma died in 1989 my grandfather, Bob, died around 1965. She never remarried, never dated, but she did have a great life. When she was dying she yelled Bob Bob here I come. Oh honey I've missed you so much. We always joked that we were glad she didn't yell Bob who the heck is that? Elizabeth I'm coming to join you honey. Sorry, but this came right to mind. My mom was watching over my great grandfather in the hospital. He'd been unresponsive for a day or so, when suddenly he said, it's about dang time you got here. I've been waiting and then he died. I found one of my comfort measures only patients standing at the side of his bed. It surprised me because he had been mostly unresponsive during my shift. I helped him back into bed and he asked me why all these people were in his room. He suddenly became quiet again and I noticed he wasn't breathing. He was a DNR so there wasn't anything to do to try to bring him back. Looking back he may have been talking about me and the CNA that was helping me get him back into bed. But who knows what or who he was seeing the last minutes of his life. Still creeps me out a little when I think about it. My father-in-law sat at his mother's bedside for days as she was dying. She was in and out of it and spent a lot of time in conversation with her parents and siblings who were all long dead. One of the last intelligible things she said was, leave the gate open, Rodney, I'm coming. Not a nurse, not a doctor, but I'm an apprentice funeral director. We went to a nursing home on a removal and as we were walking down the hall one of the patients got antsy and opened the door to his room and saw us walking with the stretcher. I'll see you next week boys. And guess who we had to pick up the next week. It never ceases to amaze and entertain me how gallows humor makes it into our lives. 
DNR patient was on comfort cares, was on a high dose of morphine and hallinating. She would alternate between grasping for things not there and trying to climb out of bed. She was too unsteady to walk so my job was to sit in the room and make sure she was safe. She tried to get up and I went to ask her what she needed. She grabbed my arm and pulled me down towards her face and said, very angrily, kill me. That one fricked with me for a while. I was in the hospital for a week on morphine. After a while that stuff really starts to mess with you. Checked in on a patient before the end of my shift and she was in good spirits. Had been joking with me the whole time. Her condition was tenuous, new trash, but she had been positive throughout. I asked how she was doing and she replied by singing the old grey mare ain't what she used to be and wished me a good night. I came in the next morning and she had coded and died overnight. Last year, my grandfather started desperately pleading for his life with his German captors from World War II. The doctor present was smart and said in German, you are free, Herr Katikature, you are free, and then he died. That was nice from the doctor. Came into an early shift and was handed over a patient who'd been very anxious and had a panic attack overnight. He was anxious all morning but obs all fine. ECG fine and so I just asked someone to sit with him to keep an eye on him reassure him for me. He gets worse. Really panicky. Heavy breathing. He's on his side in the fetal position. Doctors will be in in 10 minutes so I tell him I'll get them to him as soon as they come in but ask if he'll lie on his back for me to help his breathing. He tells me he won't make it until they get here and that he won't face the other way. Ob's still all fine at this point but he's more agitated so again I suggest he move position for comfort and that's when he says I won't make it until the doctors get here. If I turn to face the other way I'll die. He repeated this a few times to me. He arrested literally as the doctors walked in and he died on the side he'd been refusing to turn to. I'm convinced he knew. Comma if I turn to face the other way I'll die. That was my exact same thought the first time I had a panic attack. Back when I was a CNA this one resident fell off a bike for exercise in PT and seized, they came to and became lucid and said I think I'm dying but everyone in the room assured her that wasn't going to happen. She seized up and was dead within minutes. Not a hospital story, but according to my family my great grandfather was unresponsive his final few days, but suddenly sat bolt upright in the bed and then had a huge smile and raised his hands out as if greeting someone. Then he fell back and died. It was the same with my brother, but he didn't sit up. He just smiled, lifted his hands up and out, and died. I've commented this somewhere before but it stayed with me. I'm an RN and while I was a student I was caring for a lady who had end stage renal failure, had a DNAR and was shutting down. We were having a little chat, while I was chatting away while helping her put on some lotion. When she stopped, looked over my shoulder and said Bill's here love. I've got to go and swiftly stop breathing. Read her old notes and Bill was her deceased husband. What a way to go. I worked a bank shift in A&E a few months ago. A young man was in a horrible car crash. His face was covered in blood and had a compound fracture of his clavicle but conscious. He was screaming don't tell me she's dead. Where is she before succumbing to his injuries an hour later. His girlfriend had died instantly in the crash. Comma oh man. He must have been in so much pain but he's panicking about her. That would have been so rough. I'm a hospital chaplain. When I was a CPE intern. A greenhorn. I went to see a patient in the IQ who had 10 to 12 oranges on her table. We talked about oranges for about 20 minutes and then she said. Something's going to happen. I went to check on her the next day and the nurse mentioned that she passed the previous night. I asked if anyone else talked with her and she said no. So, the last conversation she had was about oranges with me. I kind of wish we talked about something else. However, the nurse said that was a worthy conversation that the patient wanted to talk about. It made me feel better. Because oranges are foreshadowing someone is gonna die. I was in the army in Pakistan to for humanitarian support after an earthquake. There was a very serious fuel bus crash when a road gave was and a dozen kids were killed. The first kid that we took off the ambulance and put on the stretcher to carry into Watridge tent said, more like screamed, something in Udru. When we got there the doc asked the translators what he said. It was the spiders are eating pepper. We all just looked at each other for a second, then just proceeded with Tridge. 
Honestly, Tridge is easier when you don't speak a mutually intelligible language. Not a doctor or nurse, but my grandfather was on hospice care at home and for two days he told us that he had to go with the little red haired girl. We didn't know what he was talking about. When he died, we cleaned him up and called the hospice nurse on duty, who came right over. I happened to be the one to answer the door and there she stood. 5 foot 2 or so, with gorgeous blue eyes and the most beautiful red hair you've ever seen. I couldn't even manage a low, but my grandmother looked around me and said very cheerfully please come in, he's been waiting for you. Sounds like the opening of some kind of feel good ghost story. I actually have three that stick out in my mind. An 83 year old woman that said my mom's here, are we going she died a few minutes later. Another older lady said I think I'm going to die today, we took vitals, everything seemed fine. She was stable. She had a heart attack a couple hours later. Not her last words, but the last she ever said to me. The last one is definitely the creepiest. A nice old lady who told my CNA she wanted to wear all white. When asked why, she said the man in black is here. She looked in the corner of the room. The CNA looked, but there was no one there. That's when I came into the room. We asked her to describe what she was seeing and she said he's in all black. And he's got a top hat on. Then she whispered and his eyes are red while her eyes moved across the room to directly behind the CNA, like she was watching him move closer to us. She died later that night, but it was unexpected. That room creeped me out for a long time after that. Sounds like she was talking about the hat man, that is creepy as frick. My grandfather's brother, he died exactly 6 hours after my grandfather and just minutes before he died he said I'm going to see you again brother. He didn't know at the time that my granddad, his brother, had died. The family were going to tell him the next morning because he was having a bad day. Yup, the day doesn't get much worse than that. I'm working on my mother's eulogy for tomorrow's wake. I'm going to go into detail for anyone that is smoking because I think it's something you should reconsider. My mom was diagnosed with terminal lung and pancreatic cancer. Mass had developed around her vocal cords and made it hard for her to speak. She smoked all of her life, and it finally caught up with her. It attacked her quick. From time she was diagnosed, to time she passed away, it was less than two weeks. First she lost her voice, then she had difficulty breathing, became weak. She couldn't walk too far, then she could only walk a little, then nothing at all. She had trouble eating. The night she died I let her smoke her cigarette. Doctor said it didn't matter anymore. And my sister and I took mom into her bed and I knew as did my sister. It was the last time. We spent a few hours with her. Holding her and I got up. Lost it a bit. And my mom said don't be sad loudly with all her might. I was fortunate to be with my mother at that time. She was due to have hospice that Monday but she did not make it. Lung cancer kills quickly. I hope none of you have to deal with that. Consider it that next cigarette. It's just a matter of time. Well enough preaching. I'm sorry for your loss. Intubated PT wrote on a clipboard. If this hurts, I'll get you. Just before the surgeon pulled out the PT's chest tube. Post open heart surgery. The tube ripped one of the coronary grafts. He bled out in about 5 seconds. Grandfather died this year at 86. He was in Nashville in a hospital for pneumonia. I was working and was going to go down there the next day to see him. My mother called me and said he was passing soon and if I wanted to talk to him. I said yes and this was the conversation verbatim. Me. Hey papa. It's Marky. How's it going? Grandfather. I'm sick. Me. Can you hang on for a few more hours and I'll be there? Grandfather. Nope. I'm out of here. Me. I love you. Grandfather. Alright. He died before the phone hung up. Really bothered me with how accepting he was of his own death. I think about it every day. You. I love you. Him. Alright. Nice. I'm a CST. Certified surgical tech. In a specialized area of surgery that sees mostly people who are up there in age. This is more of a general observation than a specific story about a patient but, more than once I've been one of the last people to see someone's loved one conscious or even alive. I never forget the ones that tell us about how they should have come in earlier or how they were scared and in a lot of pain before being put under by anesthesia. I've also experienced seemingly lower risk patients never open their eyes again. Always tell your loved ones how you 
you feel, you never know if you may not see them again. Cath Lab Tech here. This is so true. The ones we don't expect to make it usually do. Then there's the ones that walk in joking with us as if nothing's wrong with them at all. An hour later, they're gone. You really never know when your time's coming. Not a nurse or doctor, but my beloved grandpa was in the hospital, ill with pneumonia and sepsis. I thought he would recover. He was asking to see me and my family, so I went with my parents, my husband and my two little boys. Grandpa couldn't talk, but he was lucid and was watching TV in his room. He motioned for a pen and paper. He scribbled something on a scrap of paper and gave it to my oldest boy, who was about 12 at the time. It said, I love you. When we were leaving the hospital, it hit me me that grandpa was saying goodbye and I started to bawl like a baby. Grandpa had passed before I got home. He held on just to see me and my boys one more time. I still see him in my dreams, only he isn't the sick old man I had known since my grandma died in 1977. He is about 40, in the prime of his life. He is healthy and strong, taking long, energetic strides across the front yard of the house he shared with my grandma for 45 years. I have never known him to look like that, and yet, there he is, popping in to say hello. It's funny that you say he is popping by to say hi. A lot of people I know believe that when you dream of the dead, they are actually coming to visit you. Not really creepy, but you'd be surprised how quickly patients in death's door will pass when they've had a final moment with their loved ones. One of my professors in nursing school called it permission to die. No one wants to see their loved ones go, but when the inevitable is at hand, is better to send them off with good feelings. Don't let your loved ones feel guilty for leaving you behind. Let them rest in peace. My first code as a nurse was of a middle aged mother who we think ended up having a brain bleed. I was trying to check her vitals and she was super agitated, and had been all day she managed to bend her IV pole somehow. She was ripping her gown off, and the sheets off the bed, and she'd yanked her heart monitor off. I was trying to start a blood transfusion, but needed to get her vitals beforehand which was impossible because she wouldn't stay still long enough for any of it to read. I'd given her a sedative, for what we thought was anxiety, and I was praying it would kick in soon. She kept grabbing my arm saying come here, look at me, help me with fear in her eyes that I will never forget. I'm pretty sure I snapped back, I'm trying which I of course wish was something comforting instead. Then she leaned back, her eyes got droopy, she shut to her mouth. Then snapped her eyes wide open but totally glossed over. She took one last breath as a co-worker was helping me while I called the code. Patients with feelings of impending doom are a major red flag that scare the crap out of me. She was going to die and knew it. BTW. Bending her IV pole. Super impressive. I had a patient in my first week of being on a hospital floor as a CNA. She was really sweet and wanted to know all about my nursing school. Right before she went to bed, I helped her move from the chair in the room. She jokingly danced with me for a few seconds, humming an old tune before sitting on the bed. She thanked me as she drifted off to sleep. Don't worry, it will be okay. Referring to my trepidation about the new job, I assume. She was scheduled to go home and died from a complication of medications about 4 hours later. The first song on the radio that morning as I got in my car was shut up and dance. Yeah that messed with me for a long time. I'm not a doctor or nurse but I'll share. My grandmother on her deathbed dying from cancer. The afternoon she passed she sat up in her hospital bed and asked my father for a Mountain Dew. She never drank soda. My father loved the stuff my dad went to the vending machine and the hospital got them both a soda and they both drank it even with the hole in her throat. She drank the soda and said something along the lines like wow that's delicious and passed away. I tear up every time I drink a dew. Nice try, Mountain Dew advertising department. Just kidding. I'm sorry for your loss. My brother died just a little over 2 years ago from cancer. He was a medical doctor, I'm a PhD history, so I guess we've got it covered. As we were in the hospice room of the hospital, my friend came in to visit on Yuguna's last day. He was a redditor too. UG00N says my heart. My heart is under the TV in my room. Bob goes, it's cool man. Don't worry about it. No, my heart. It's under the TV. He died later that night. 
couple days later we were gathering up his stuff and found his stash of pot under his TV. LOL he seemed to want to tell my friend because that's who was procuring pot for him. Never smoked before he was diagnosed and had fun with that during his treatment. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.